welcome to a new episode of Nitro Nights. I'm Melly, and today we're going to sit down with Jaroslav Honzik, better known as Jardier, to talk about the GT4 DLC pack for Assetto Corsa Competizione. Besides that, we're going to take a closer look on the real race round four. And of course, Tom Deacon will supply you with the news news flash and keep you updated about the happenings of the past few days. So guys, get ready and stay tuned. But before we head over to Tom, it is time to jump into our first competition of the day. The action took place on the Suzuka International Racing Course for another episode of Lamborghini's inaugural eSports Racing Tournament. Here's round four of the real race in Assetto Corsa. The second last round of the real race was about no less than two more starting places at the big season finale on September the 18th at Lamborghini's headquarters in Italy. The rolling start saw Jesus Celia Sanchez fighting to keep pole position. Despite Amir Hosseini's straight attack, the Spaniard was able to lead the field and even extended his advantage round after round. A fierce fight for places two to five came through in the rounds that followed, especially between Hosseini and the South African Jordan Sherratt, who's also a real-world Formula 4 driver. But after 30 minutes of racing, the fight between both drivers came to a sudden end. Incredible defensive moves. I'm sure I've seen Amir Hussein do this before. Hussein has run a little bit wide though through the turn two. And now it's side by side and Jordan Sherratt will try and turn in. More contact between the two, this time on the inside line. They both slide, they both go off the track and oh, thank you very much. Giovanni De Salvo goes into second position. The Italian Giovanni De Salvo seized the opportunity and took second place straight away. Meanwhile, Cecilia Sanchez kept driving his solitary laps at the top of the table, but his lead started to shrink as De Salvo drove him to a real final sprint to the finish. 130R is not a place to go side by side or really try and overtake unless you feel like you've got the opportunity to run uh, over the track limits and not be penalised and De Salvo has a better speed. I'm sure you're correct, Paul, it's to do with the mapping. Now through into the braking zone, but De Salvo caught him too early and was too far back into the braking zone to make a move. So Cecilia Sanchez, who led from the lights all the way through to the flag, is going to take victory ahead of Giovanni De Salvo, but only just so close between those two. Cecilia Sanchez finally saved himself with a breathtakingly thin lead over the finish line. He and De Salvo have therefore qualified for the grand final in September. But with round five in Laguna Beach, there's going to be one last qualifying chance next week. Well, 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 what an exciting race. And I really can't wait to see how everything pans out in the grand finals. Really, really excited, actually. But well, speaking of competitions, this wasn't the only competition happening uh, in the past few days. And it is now time to bring it all together in one of the most informative videos on the World Wide Web by the most talented Mr. Newsflash himself. So, Tom, take it away. Yes, Melly, it is I, Tom Deacon, back for the Nitro Nights News Flash. Your words of encouragement and introduction are so kind. It does put a bit of a pressure on me, uh, so I hope I don't disappoint. Uh, four competitions to talk about today. We'll kickstart with one that always brings excitement and fun. To be fair, I could be talking about any one of them, but in fact, I'm talking about the W Series. Now, people have doubted previous guests of Nitro Nights, uh, Beitzka Vissa, whether she is still the queen of the W Series. Now, three races took place. Number one was won by Vissa, and that is over her rival Serdakova coming home in 14th place. However, Serdakova bounced back in race two as she won it. Vissa didn't disappoint. She finished in fourth place and that is after the reverse grid where she had the challenge of fighting back into the race. Race three was much different though for Vissa. She finished in 12th place. An uncharacteristic mistake took her off the track. Now, are those sort of mistakes going to stick around um, because Marta Garcia finished that race? Uh, because we've got much more on the way. But when you look at the standings, uh, Vissa is on top with 291 points, Serdakova in second with 240, and Garcia close behind in third with 223. In my opinion, 
she's still the queen of the W Series. Uh, let's head over then to the fourth round of the Porsche Tag Heuer Super Cup. The last few rounds have been very controversial. First of all, there was a bug in the previous round at Le Mans, which meant the result got deleted. And then you had the unknown circumstance that cancelled uh, the event last week on short notice. However, now we're back and we've got an unbelievably competitive grid. Uh, qualifying began as expected. Joshua K. Rogers claimed a pole in every round so far, and this time was no different. He claimed there's 10 points for outperforming his rivals in quali. The only uh, ones to make real progression were Alejandro Sanchez and Max Beneke, who brackets, I'm gonna put this in brackets, uh, BTW just became the highest rated iRacing driver of all time, close brackets. He is incredible. Uh, the sprint race saw some amazing action uh, with not much change to the positions. The feature race offered a lot of drama as championship leader Joshua Rogers got shunted to the back of the field after getting slammed from behind. No one likes that happening to them. Uh, it was still Joshua's fault though as he ran wide before the eventual crash. It was a gift for Max Beneke and Sebastian Job. They were able to pull away to take second and third. Alejandro Sanchez led for the rest of the race and comfortably brought home the win. Standings are as followed. Job at the top with 219 points, 18 points behind him. His Max Beneke in second uh, with Alejandro in third with 198 points. We move on to the WTCR preseason finale going into the final race. A lot of talk was about whether Jan Erlesche, the points leader, could hold on. Uh, we headed to Sepang with the stakes high. Critically, Erlesche's closest championship rival, Norbert Mikulic, managed only a ninth place in quali and that was dashing his chance uh, in race one. Uh, when we got to the race, he dramatically collided with another driver because he was over pushing to move up the grid and to give him chance in the championship. The race was a display of dominance by the Hondas Esteban Guerrieri and Nesta Girolami as they took the checkered flag ahead of Jan Erlesche. Thanks to the reverse grid, it did give Mikulic a chance in the championship and the whole race uh, in the feature was a switcheroo in the midfield. Mikulic grabbed the first place, which meant that Erlesche needed to be 11th minimum to keep his championship. Uh, during the race, Erlesche uh, bounced back in positions between about 20 times uh, from 8th to 12th. In the end, I can confirm, Erlesche managed to finish Seventh. That means he is your championship winner. Congratulations to him. Go back and watch it because the race was very tense indeed. Uh, finally, we move on to round five of the racing world of Outlaws. The fifth round revisited Lernerville Speedway once again. The first time we had that was in round three. Uh, before this round, the top five were divided by a mere 40 points with the top three having seven points between them. It's so close. And here's the thing. The four previous rounds have produced four different winners. So it's very very difficult to predict who was going to win this one. Uh, Heat Race 3 produced some absolutely insane race action with a numerous crashes and an unbelievable tight overtake. The featured race, though, was headlined by a dominant performance by Hayden Cardwell. Cardwell took the play, uh, first place in the featured race, making him the first racer to win two races this season. Guess where he also won? Yes, the Lernerville Speedway. So this guy has some substantial knowledge on that track. What does it do for the standings? Well, it moves Cardwell up to top with 341 points and that was over previous leader C who has now got 333 points. That is it for the news flash. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a comment. Melly, it is back to you in the studio. Thank you so much, Tom. It is a pleasure having you on board. And speaking of which, it is indeed my pleasure to introduce tonight's guest of Nitro Nights. He's one of the funniest, fairest and fastest sim racers of the world. So please welcome Jardier. <laughs> hey, Hello. how's it going? <laughs> I'm good. It's great, great. I'm, I'm so happy to be here on the night tonight. Yeah, thank you so much for taking time to be here with us tonight. And I'm really looking forward to talking to you about, um, about the things that are happening in the sim racing world. But before we jump too far ahead of ourselves, please, for the few people that don't know you, can you please introduce yourself? Uh, okay, I'm a, I'm a sim racer, eSport driver who is doing a YouTube and is streaming a lot. <laughs> and you have a background of, uh, of re-racing as well. Yeah, yeah. I was very fortunate when I was a teenager, basically. I was uh, racing in the touring cars since 14 years until like 18 or 19 years. I was racing in the touring cars and uh, won a championship here in uh, my country. And I mean, you describe yourself as a gentleman driver who wants to drive as fair and square as possible. And um, 
is it some basic attitude in your life? Uh, well, basically, I'm uh, yeah, I'm trying to basically in the sim racing and the real racing, I'm trying to win fair and square, as you are saying, trying to be gentleman on the racetrack. I rather finish second than winning the race like unfair advantage or stuff like that. And yeah, we can say in real life, I'm trying to be like very similar, not to be like bad or something like that. <laughs> mm. Is that something that the esports racing scene is lacking? Like a respectful uh, attitude to... towards your opponents? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think like uh, in real racing and in the sim racing, you really need uh, drivers who really, really go for the win, you know, no matter what, because it's very good for the teams and everything. But to to me, I feel like I'm trying to to put, in, put into it a little bit like, more like gentlemanship and fun because yeah you can like of course i can win more races if i would be more aggressive but i don't think i would be happy with myself after that so i rather like lose <laughs> lose and have a better better time and better fun as a gentleman than uh yeah with, with bad advantage is that also something that keeps your motivation up Yes, definitely, definitely. Because if I, I feel like uh, in uh, certain situations, I could go more aggressive and, and be like, as I said, a little bit unfair and get the position, for example, to, to win the race or, or get the podium. But I feel like to me, it's like more challenging to find other ways around. So I'm trying to di different types of overtakes from the outside and such, yes! make the guy ahead of me make a mistake and such. And it makes me like, as you said, very motivational. So I'm basically standing up the, stepping up the level for myself. And uh, you're also a good role model as well for maybe young and upcoming drivers. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to say, but from the community, we have a very nice uh, feedbacks that uh, people really like the, the gentlemanship, the sportsmanship in uh, in the racing, which we provide on the streams and such. So it's kind of nice to, to hear from the people that uh, they watch the channel. They really enjoy this type of driving. And, and those people, like the number of your followers grew over the past months as well. Esports racing uh, got more attention in general over during the pandemic due to obvious reasons, uh, of course. Um, but where do you think uh, this excitement comes from? Like, why do people watch your uh, content? I feel like uh, the, the main reason is that I try to approach the sim racing a little differently as we were talking. I also like, especially on my streams, I'm trying to be like a very positive and happy guy. And because I like, well, that's how I work basically overall. And I feel like I'm trying to bring it into the racing, you know, instead of being focusing for one hour race, I communicate with my chat, I'm communicating with my uh, fellow drivers, I'm trying to have fun, I'm eating food, and while I'm overtaking or, or defending, we are talking about, I don't know, my dog or, or the things that are happening, you know, like, uh, we are trying to bring, bring like a little fun into it. And I feel like that's why people enjoy it, because it's something different, you know, but because a lot of people know the, the racing or the sim racing, like in a serious, serious level, when you don't even blink for like an hour, and I try to bring a different approach and laugh with, with the people uh, all around. <laughs> and they say that boys aren't able to multitask, so that's wrong, obviously. But maybe... Yeah, you should squash my strings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but maybe the racing... Uh, well, you and racing even got so far that sim racing or esports racing has imprinted to your brain <laughs> and is like uh, completely covered by muscle memory. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I feel like, well, I'm racing for like, sim racing for like 15 years now, basically since the beginning, basically half of my life. And I feel like it's kind of automatic in some of the situations. And sometimes I find myself even lost because like, I just realize I'm like defending for like 10 laps with some person or some other driver. And then I realize the race is finished and we have been talking about food or something in the background, you know? So it's like... <laughs> it's oh, by the way, like, guys, I won. I don't know how it <laughs> happened, but I won. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. People are like, oh my God, you have a guy behind you, defend or something. And we are talking about, I don't know, the weather. And so, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's great to hear. But it seems like you guys are having a lot of fun on your stream. So I have to tune into the next one as well. Um, but uh, Yaroslav, tell me, what are your future goals? Do you maybe want to go back to the real racing track? Yeah, of course. Like the, of course, like the, the real racing is something which I was the most passionate about. It was basically my my childhood. You can childhood, you can say, and I really, really miss it. But of course, the I chosen the wrong hobby. You know, this is, the real racing is way too expensive. I should probably maybe play chess or something. But uh, yeah, I got to stick with the real racing and uh, basically sim racing as it's as close as possible to the real racing 
is just something I'm passionate about. And uh, I feel like maybe in the future I will be able to afford it myself or I will grow up into it. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe combine it both, you know, sim racing and real racing. I was about to say, you never know what chances will come up in the next few years because it seems that esports racing is not done growing yet. No, no, absolutely. We are not, like, as I said, for the past 15 years, I'm in the sim racing and I can tell in the past two years, the sim racing grew so much that uh, I'm looking forward every next year. I'm looking forward to what's going to happen. What's going to happen, indeed. But Yaroslav, thank you so much up until here, but you're, you'll be with us during the show. We're going to talk mm -hmm. to you later as well. But before we send you off, well, before we head into the next video, uh, that's more correct, actually, it is time for a quick fire round. Are you ready? Uh, yes. <laughs> so for everyone that just tuned in and don't know what the quick fire round is, I'm going to ask Yaroslav a few questions and he has to answer them as fast as possible. He doesn't know what I'm going to ask him, but let's see what he answers. So Yaroslav, are you ready for the first question? Yes. <laughs> All right. Then I would say let's get started in three, two, one, go. Favorite racing game? Uh, corsa competizione. Favorite driver? Kimi Raikkonen. Favorite car? BMW. A set of cars are with controller or every other game with the rig? Every other game with the rig. Oh, wow. Favorite racing game except a set of Corsa? I racing. <laughs> GT3 or GT4 cars? GT3. Why? Uh, more downforce, faster. Okay, perfect. That one, the, I, I made the last one up. I just wanted to know why you prefer the GT3 or the GT4. But the, oh, due to obvious reasons, thank you so, so much for the quick... That was actually one of the quickest quickfire rounds, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you so much. That was really nice. But yes, you also jo chose the GT3 car, but uh, that's what you did, right? I totally forgot what yes. you answered. Yeah, that was correct. I was correct. So, but we're going to talk about the GT4 cars since uh, the new DLC pack has been released in Assetto Corsa Competizione. So, let's take a closer look of what this DLC has to offer. It's time to change things up in Assetto Corsa Competizione. Up until now, it was only possible to drive around in GT3 cars. But strap in, a breath of fresh air is chasing through the game, finally bringing GT4 cars. Normally, the GT4 category is for amateurs who are just getting into the scene and proving their skills. But it also provides some of the most gripping races. Showing off one's skill as a driver is far more important than the kinds of cars involved. Aston Martin Vantage, BMW M4, McLaren 570S and many more are now available. Each car has its own liveries. While the Maserati MC GT4 only comes with one, Mercedes AMG GT4 has as many as 10. Overall, 11 new cars have been added to the game and cover the entire GT4 grid of the 2019 Blancplain GT World Challenge Europe. They even constitute their own class in Assetto Corsa, so you can compete in exclusive GT4 competitions. Or maybe you believe that your driving skills will make up for your slower car, then go for it and drive in the new mixed class races in which you can choose between GT3 and GT4 cars. You can even pre-select your favorite car and livery for each class. So if you want to hop quickly into a game, you don't have to waste any time. Just put the pedal to the metal as soon as the lights hit green. And yes, indeed. But I'm still here with uh, Jardier, sadly not in our studio, but via video call. Thank you so much for still being with us and for joining us today. So you're a big Assetto Corsa fan. Um, what is your thought on the new DLC? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Basically, everything was set in a video. It unlocks, uh, to me, it unlocks the whole new game because the uh, Azure Corsa was focused on uh, mainly GT3 cars. And uh, now we got a multi class, we got way slower cars as a category. And uh, I think it's a very good step forward. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite car in Azure Corsa in general? 
In general, I would say Ferrari for A8, GD3. And uh, in the GD4 DLC pack? Uh, Mercedes AMG. It's a beast. Indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. And um, have you tried the mixed classes? Uh, yes, I did just uh, like a not big endurance yet, just a very short uh, 30 minute race. It was a good fun. It was a good fun. So it was fun. And how hard was it to drive with a GT4 uh, car against GT3 cars? Oh, it's a uh, death. <laughs> it's a death because the, 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 the speed difference is like absolutely crazy. You, you don't even notice it. Like when you're seeing, like hearing GT3 versus GT4, you're like, oh, it's not going to be that speed difference and such. But the GT3 cars provide so much bigger downforce that especially on the tracks like Silverstone and such, the GT3 cars are so much faster in the corners and they can dive so much later in the corners that in a GT4, you have like little fear <laughs> when they are approaching. <laughs> so please don't blow me off the track. I'm not as grippy as you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's perfect. So, uh, Jordi, what are your hopes for the next uh, Assetto Corsa DLC? Or maybe big update, who knows? Well, obviously, uh, it's very limited because the, the game is official GT War Challenge. So hopefully in, a, in autumn, we should supposed to get the British GT pack. So we're going to get some good, cool British tracks. And I hope like at least like early 2021, we will get like uh, more American tracks because of the GT War Challenge. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's very interesting. I'm really looking forward to it as well. But um, that's almost it. But we still have our social showroom waiting for us. I mean, uh, last week we published a very, um, very interesting livery tutorial uh, on how to create awesome liveries yourself uh, over at overtake.gg if you haven't checked it out yet. And we ask you guys at home to send us um, via social media your personal uh, livery or maybe your own designs and we got so many amazing uh, amazing posts from you guys so um jardier fancy having a look on on all the liveries our community sent us in not Absolutely. of course not all we we have a, <laughs> a, a small selection but as said thank you so much for getting involved via social media so much you basically overwhelmed us with uh, pictures of your amazing liveries and your own creations uh, and so we decided to to put up a whole gallery of your own liveries over at overtake.gg so guys if you haven't posted anything in uh, in amongst those lines don't worry about it go over to overtake.gg and have a look in our gallery and there you can enjoy all the liveries sent in by our community, by our amazing community. So, as already mentioned, Jaria, let's have a closer look on the liveries of the community and I'm excited to see what you are going to say to those. Let's see what the community has sent in. I already like this one as well. So, Koshiro sent us uh, this beautiful livery. What do you think about that? It looks amazing. <laughs> the Japanese anime looks really nice on the cars. I mean, I'm a huge Sailor Moon fan myself, and we can see Sailor Pluto, Sailor Jupiter, Sailor Mars, and Sailor Uranus. So it's so great to see all of them united on, on a race car. I mean, Sailor Moon and race cars. I haven't <laughs> seen an episode where those two factors have been combined, but maybe for the future, who knows, who knows? <laughs> Thank you so much, Koshiro, for sending this one in. And Phoenix, RZM Phoenix, uh, also sent this great liver. I, I love the tiger animal print with the color yeah, fade. That's actually amazing. It is really insane. I mean, Jaria, have you tried uh, creating a livery on your own? Uh, years ago, and I'm like not very good in the graphics, but uh, this is absolutely something I would never be able to do. <laughs> this I, is amazing. I was about to say, I mean, if I look at those liver liveries, it, it looks like they were supplied by the game, you know? Like, I, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to create something like that. I mean, how long does it take to, to put up a new livery? It's amazing. You have no answer to that as well, right? Like, how no, I have no clue. Yeah, days, probably. <laughs> I, I really don't know. It's I don't just, know. It's, like, a, it's like, like an art, you know? So I, I would say days, hours. Yeah, it's, 
insane. I mean, it looks so real. That's what I find astonishing. Like it really looks so. It, it's almost photorealistic, which I really, really enjoy. So Greens also sent us something in, which I really like as well. A very aggressive version of Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> With I, I I forgot the name of the pig, but doesn't matter. Here is Jake's uh, livery, the Hulk. I mean, <laughs> if you see that one in the rear mirror, you you pull over, right? I mean, you, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you don't want to get Hulk smashed by a race car on the track. You really oh, this is lovely. Oh, this is beautiful. I mean, even like the scene behind the the car, like it is. It is it is very very nice. Very this is lovely. amazing. Yeah, the Japanese graphics. Nice. <laughs> I like this one. The flying <laughs> sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rallies, for sending this one in. Oh, and this one is really pretty as well. Oh, the monster on the side is amazing. Yeah, it is really is really that a nice. Custom? A handful of my favorite creations over this last year. Okay, there are plenty more. So, guys, check out that tweet if you haven't uh, done it just yet. Um, to see all the other entries, well, all the other uh, tweets with the liveries from our community. And as already said, we put up a whole gallery over at overtake.gg and go have a look and enjoy all the liveries sent in by our community. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. And if you want to show us your livery as well, use the hashtag liver, livery wizard oh that's a nice one to say for a non-native speaker <laughs> livery <laughs> wizard <laughs> and tweet us uh, and of course do not forget to tag over uh, to tag overtake underscore gg on twitter when sending in all those amazing designs i really can't wait to see them all and jardir we made it to the finish line <laughs> The show is over. It's great. Already? <laughs> Already. The time flew just by, right? <laughs> yeah, like, like during the endurance races. Yeah, absolutely. So, Jerry, how many times per week do you stream? Where can we see you? When can we see you? Six, six seven times per week now. Okay. It's so, no chance tough. to miss you. Yeah, yeah, basically, if you if you go to Twitter, if you type my name, or even if you go to youtube.com slash charger, you can find my streams right there. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for your time and this lovely interview. And I wish you best of luck for the future with your YouTube channel. May it grow even more. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It was great. Bye. And guys, as already said, thank you so much for tuning in. That's it for today. We'll be back next week and I'll hopefully see you again then. Take care and up until then. Bye.